Now, today, as we have done every day, we told you how many people have died as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Its impact has varied from region to region, with some communities affected more than others. This week, we're reporting from the Royal London Hospital, which serves a large South Asian community in the capital's East End. In today's special report, Clive Murray looks at what happens when the doctors and nurses have done their very best for those in their care. And his report contains some distressing detail. It's hard to comprehend how historic these times are when you're living them. It's distance that will aid clarity. The lives and jobs lost because of coronavirus are destined to become chapter headings, not footnotes, in the public record. And in one corner of the East End, the work of a tiny morgue will become part of London's narrative. All the communities here have been hit by the coronavirus. But this place, up and running in a matter of days, serves the desperate burial needs of the Muslim Asian community, hit hardest by the disease. Some of the victims come from the nearby Royal London Hospital. Having prayed much of their lives in the East London Mosque. At the height, we were dealing with around 25 bodies daily coming into the morgue because the cemeteries and other funeral services weren't able to cope. Mm. Uh, the leadership of the East London Mosque felt it had a duty to intervene when Muslim dead began to pile up. It's beyond really uh, comprehension. You know, people would have this guilt inside the family and the community that we couldn't do the right thing for our deceased especially the ones that suddenly passed away, you know. So it would have been a guilt that would have been felt throughout our lives, you know. This, this lady phoned us up in Islam Mosque and said, well, look, I've got my dad who died, passed away in the hospital. My mum is quarantined in, in, in my home. I can't see her because I have to be away from her. And I can't see my dad before he is buried. This is the kind of situation that we had. And then it brings tears to my eyes now, even now talking about it. This is how bad it was. You know, people felt so helpless. It's often when we feel helpless that some turn to faith. While the Royal London may be one of the leading teaching hospitals in the world, there's always a little corner for what's important. The Muslim chaplain here is Imam Farouk Siddiqui and he's proud of the Royal London's links to one of the biggest Muslim communities in Britain. He's about to see a patient whose underlying health conditions were complicated by COVID-19. We were given permission to film. She's clinging on to life, but has refused any final medical intervention to save her. A balm for the dying. Farouk's had to recite these words so many times in this pandemic. Farouk, just how important is it for that kind of prayer to take place? It's just really important for not just the patient, but uh, her children and the kind of extended family. Um, it's, it's a kind of source of comfort for them to know that they've had a chaplain, a religious figure, come say some prayers um, for comfort. And this might be the last time they're able to speak and, and, and say the, the, the most important words in our faith, which is, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that there is no God but God. Meanwhile, death appears two floors above on the coronavirus wards. It's been a difficult night for the team here. They lost four patients, every one a tragedy. And at the height of the pandemic, on one night, 11 people died. Now this is one of the vacant, empty beds left behind. 
You'd seen how medics battle to save the life of one man. Yeah. And again, yeah, go, 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 go. This is not good. Yeah, okay, ready, steady, go. Ravaged by COVID-19. And Sister Becky Smith told us a heartbreaking verdict loomed. Potentially we'll make a decision about whether it's appropriate to continue with what we're doing at the moment or whether we should give him a bit of dignity. Well, the patient's name was Krishna Pillayogan, and the decision was made to stop his life-saving drugs. A white partition was placed around his bed, and Becky's face was the last one he saw. Take us into the cubicle at that moment. I just sat on a chair and just held his hand uh, to be with him in that time. It was a very quick experience in that way. We give the patient a full um, wash together, so two nurses will always give them a warm wash, put them in some new clothes so that they can be um, sent away with a lot of dignity and, and respect for their body and for their life. Do you take any of this home? I think in these current times with COVID, it's a lot harder to separate things because you feel like it could be your dad, it could be your mum, because it's so close to home for everybody in, in the world at the moment. It's difficult because it's happening every day. So you do definitely take it home. We'd all like to leave behind more than an empty bed. For the shadow we cast to be benign. Those who chronicle this time of coronavirus will record that this hospital and the community it served tried to work together to leave a legacy of which both could be proud. On tomorrow evening's programme, race in class in the time of COVID-19. All of us cannot be doctors. Somebody have to be a doctor, someone have to be a nurse, and somebody have to be a domestic. So I'm proud of what I'm young. And those hoping for burial in the soil of their birth, but stranded in the UK. Clive Myrie, BBC News.